first Luli, thank you for your time. Thank you for thank you for taking a little time to talk about the movie. I saw it in Sundance. You know, I saw it last uh, last year uh, in January in Sundance, and it, it was a really good you know second watch. We're watching it again uh, this year. Um, so thank you, thank you for for the time. No, thank you for being here. So you know, it's funny again. I think the second time you watch it, it hits differently. Yeah, the story. If, I mean, if you want to mention that you wrote it in, you know, in 1917 and 19 and 1919, and back 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 in those at those years, you no nobody would have guessed that 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 you weren't trying to you guess the future, you know. <laughs> um, so how did the story came about? I mean, because it's just it's it's, it's you're tackling different subjects, you're tackling you know, you're tackling um, relationships, you're tackling human behavior. How did the story came about? What prompted you to write the story? So I wanted to tell the story about this couple that had just met and their idea was having just one night together. And suddenly this toxic pink cloud comes and creates this sort of forced marriage that they have to deal with. And seeing how they react differently to this cloud and to the confinement, and what she wants and what he wants and they don't want the same thing and how they try to adapt to the, to the situation together. So we follow the conflict of them being stuck and having different notions of happiness and freedom and, and goals in life. The, the chemistry with the actors was great. I think Renata and both Eduardo did really good um, with the, with the, with, with, you know, with, what they're trying, what they're trying, what they're trying to pre present. How much did they, did they, did they need the whole script, did, or the, or did, were you feeding them um, as the lines or the the where we were going with the story slowly but surely? Did they hide the? Did they had a complete idea where where the story is going? Yes, they knew everything. Uh, Renata, I think she even read the first draft that was like. 150 pages uh, so she knew the different versions she was on set and she was like no I say this but like in the first version uh, it was different so she knew everything and so they both knew and we did uh, rehearsals they knew uh, each other from theater plays that they have done together other movies I knew them Eduardo did my first short film ever when I was in university Renata did shorts with me too, and they knew each other. So it was good having this, this intimacy so we could really, you know, work together and be open and try many things. And they knew it was a, a difficult uh, task that they had because the film is on them, <laughs> almost <laughs> all of the film. You just answer a bunch of, uh, I had, you know, I, I was I was asking, I wanted to know if they, if they are working the task or you sit together and, and, and if, if you wrote different versions of, of the, the story, because again, it tackles so many subjects, relationships, uh, human behavior. Um, did, did, the, did Renata, you said it yourself, did Renata give you some inputs on where she saw it, like maybe the character would be going? Because it, it, that seemed really something that, that's something that worked to me. It's the, the relationship, the, you know, the chemistry with, with, with the two of them. Yes, for sure. It was very like we were discussing the characters together. I think uh, Renata was struggling a bit on, on the beginning where um, Hena, uh, Giovanna makes him cake for his birthday and she was like, why would she cook for him? They don't even know each other and you know, it's too much of, you know, the, like the, being the perfect wife. But like, okay but it's it's his birthday like you can do a cake you know once <laughs> so it was funny like some moments were more uncomfortable to her and some moments she really related to to the character so it was very interesting it was a, an interesting journey and one thing that was amazing for us is that i really asked my ad to shoot almost chronologically that was very important for them so it was not of course it was not chronologically all the scenes but like now we are shooting the first week, now the first year, now three years, now five mm -hmm. years. So that was amazing because then we could feel the process and feel the passing of time uh, ourselves. Uh, something I found really funny is the way stuff comes into the house with the tube. And I, I just find it hilarious. 
how, how did that idea came about? Because obviously now we're in the pandemic and we're still in the pandemic. And to, again, this story hits differently right now because we're still in the pandemic and I don't want to blow the ending, but you know, we're still in this. So how did that specific idea came about? Because I just find that to be hilarious. Yeah, so I wanted to focus on the characters and to focus on on them and how they react and and make it intimate. So I, I didn't want to explore the scientific aspects of it. it was not interesting for me. But I was like, okay, I just have to explain how they eat, you know, how they get food. So I put this like bizarre thing on the window and the food comes from it. And I know it's not logical, like some people say that makes no sense but like like i don't care if it makes a lot of sense practically because uh and, and, and it was i was like joking with our our delivery systems you know because it is bizarre like i type pizza on the computer and 40 minutes later a pizza comes to my door so it is kind of magical our delivery systems anyway so it was like a a joke with with that but it, I think it was the only thing that I felt that I could, I had to show some way. <laughs> um, before I let you go, I'm running out of time. Uh, how did you convince people to understand that you wrote this two years ago, four years ago? Because it's just, it hits so, it hits so personal. I mean, I mean to me, again, I, when I first saw it in Sundance, I liked it because I understood where we were going because of what's happening, right, in 2021. But we're all 2022 right now, and we're still there. I mean, nothing has changed. And how do people, yeah, what do you expect people to, how do you expect people to process the story when they see it? Yes, it is bizarre. Like, for example, now I was going to go to LA for the premiere in, in cinemas there, and now Omicron and everything is crazy. So, like, okay, I'm not going, not, not getting to this plane. But yes, it's like it's never ending. It's, it's bizarre. I hope it ends soon. But I think, yes, I think people could relate to the film in Sundance on last January and now we are in January again and, and we are still in this situation. So I understand that some people don't even want to watch things with the you know confinement and pandemic, but I think people who are watching and opening themselves to that experience, mm -hmm. we they can relate to their characters. Mm -hmm. And personally I like when I can see myself on the screen some way uh, and many people have said, oh, it's, it's uh, like online, I, people are saying it's very weird, but in some way it was therapeutical for me. Like it helped mm -hmm. me process some things and helped mm -hmm. me think about myself and the pandemic. So I'm happy that uh, I'm sad, of course, that the pandemic is, exists, but it's always good to have a film that you can relate to yourself to. I think, uh, just to let you go, I think anybody that, that, that I've and all the colleagues that I've talked to, I all have loved them because they relate to it. I think anybody that can watch it, I'm going to relate to it. You know, sadly, because of the situation that, that's going on, but it, it has different layers that people should look for. Again, thank you for your time, Loli. Thank you so much, Rafael.